Hello everybody and welcome to the Hackintosh part one. So this uh, series of videos is going to be broken down into four parts. Um, this is the first part, this is the part where I show you everything that is going to make up this um, beast of a computer. So uh, yeah, let's get going. So the blood of the system is um, the motherboard and that is why I have gone with a Gigabyte H81N. As you can tell by the size of it, it's a mini ITX board. And um, yeah, Gigabyte, they are by far the best manufacturer for people who want to hack and tosh. It is super, super easy to get OS X running on Gigabyte based systems. Um, this is a really nice board, obviously ultra durable. They are bomb proof, these ultra durable boards. Um, supports all of the new sort of uh, fourth generation Intel core processors, so I could stick a quad core, six core um, i7 in here, and it, and it would work, no no hassles. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's got um, the UE, e, I can never say this, the UEFI BIOS, um, USB 3. It also has mini PCIe and uh, M mini uh, SATA. So that means a couple of things really. One, I can get native Wi-Fi support through the uh, PCIe uh, socket on the board. Uh, obviously you can't do that via a USB dongle, say. And I can also uh, put an SSD on the actual motherboard itself. Um, I can pick up an, N an M SATA um, SSD relatively cheaply to be honest with you. And um, it won't take any space in the system and um, it'll still be pretty quick. So yeah, that's the motherboard. The CPU I like to think of as sort of the brain, the head of the system, and um, I've gone with this. Obviously this just looks like any any sort of um, processor from where you're looking at. This is an Intel Core i3 4150. Um, this is a dual core chip uh, at 3.5 GHz, but it's hyper-threaded, which will make editing and rendering videos pretty much, pretty much anything that requires or is preferable with four cores. It basically, it'll, it, the hyperthreading will help out a lot um, in programs like that. This is a beastly little CPU. It should run pretty much any game I throw at, throw at it, and um, it sort of benches surprisingly, even in multi-core performance, very very similarly to what my Mac Pro did. Um, in Geekbench, uh, single-core performance, it benches about three thousand, and in uh, this is in sixty-four bit now, I believe. I can't remember where I got the numbers from, though, to be honest with you. Uh, and multi-core, it scores about 6,500. That is very similar, multi-core-wise, to what my Mac Pro got. The difference is, single-core performance is over a 1,000 points to the good, so... Programs, especially, that run better on a, a lower number of cores, is just... I'm going to see massive, massive differences. It's going to be cooled by this guy. Um, not the stock Intel cooler, although it'll, it, it would get by just fine with the Intel cooler. This is a Zalman, and I'm trying to say the model number here, CNPS5X. Um, it's a really, really great little cooler. It is super cheap. You can pick it, for under, pick it up for under £15 on Amazon, which is just mind-blowing. Um, it's a tower cooler, so it'll look a little bit well, a lot more beastly than the stock Intel one does in the case. Um, it's got a 92mm fan on it, and um, it's got cut cup pipe in, so... It should do a much, much better job than the Intel cooler, and um, it'll look awesome while doing so. The graphics card is this guy. This is a Gigabyte again, um, GTX 660. Um, this is the overclocked version. Um, this is a gorgeous card. Yes, it's a generation old, um, but... This is just a great value card now. I mean, yeah, they're getting tougher to find and obviously when supply goes down demand goes up and prices increase But second hand you can pick these up on eBay ridiculously cheap and this will get through Anything anything even like the most modern stuff w without even breaking a sweat This combined with the i3 is is just gonna scream. Um, I love this card a bit so I was running it in my Mac Pro um, and honestly, the Xeons are a little bit of a bottleneck for this card. This this is just a, it's a beastly card, and especially in the second-hand market, the value for money is just insane. Memory then, I'm going with eight gigs of uh, 1333 megahertz Patriot signature memory. Um, this is decent memory. It's nothing special, but it's reliable and it will do the job. People say, oh, why don't you get 1600 megahertz memory? This is cheaper. This stuff is cheaper. And 
honestly, the real world differences from 1333 to, to 1600 megahertz is minor at most. So I thought, well, this is a relatively, I, I, I like to keep everything on a budget. I may as well just save a couple of quid. And um, yeah, I mean, this will do the job, no hassle whatsoever. Storage, um, I'm going with, to start with anyway, two 500 gigabyte Seagate Pipeline HD2 drives. Now these are not quick drives in the slightest. Um, they only run at the 5900 RPM, but a terabyte of storage, I'm gonna have OS X on one, Windows on the other, um, 60 meg cache. They are reliable, they are quiet, they are cool, and um, that's all you really want in a hard drive, really. I mean, it, they're not going to fail on me. I, I've been running three of these on my Mac Pro for the last 18 months, and they are just so awesome. I love them to bits, so I just went, all right, these are cheap. I picked two of them up, and um, yeah, they should do the job. Hopefully then in the future I can get either, as I said in, uh, previously, get an, uh, a SATA SSD to go on the board, um, a 1.8 inch um, M SATA SSD, or then as well, I could also, if I want to, um, get a nice 2.5 inch SSD to act as a boot drive for either OS X or Windows. Um, so yeah, this is just a starting point, two of these should get me going, and then in the future with upgrades I can add SSDs and more hard drives or whatever. But yeah, they're awesome drives in themselves, and um, they they'll get me going just fine. So what is going to be making all of these parts tick? Well, it's this guy. This is the uh, Corsair CX500M. This is a semi-modular uh, power supply, 80 plus uh, bronze uh, certified, and it will do. It, it'll handle the system fine. A couple of people have said, are you sure 500 watt is going to be enough? A simple answer, yeah, it will be. Um, think about it. The, the 660 uses maybe 150 watts at the absolute limit. Um, and I don't really see the rest of the, the rest of the system using more than 200, maybe 250 at the absolute maximum. So um, it should do fine. The, it's modular as well, so I'll be able to just switch out the cables as and when I need them, and it will make cable management in this very small case a lot, uh, a lot easier. And last but not least, then the case. I can't. I was gonna. <laughs> I was gonna try and pick it up then, but I just look really stupid. Um, it's a Bit Phoenix Phenom. Uh, the mini ITX version, obviously, um, in Arctic White. This is an awesome case. It, it's one of my favourite cases of all time. They are just absolutely gorgeous. Um, the internals are, are absolutely genius. So even with the GTX 660 installed, I can still have um, two full-size hard drives, an M SATA SSD, and then a 2.5, I believe, three 2.5-inch SSDs, two on the side panel and one below the two drives. So it's just a really, really flexible case. Um, airflow is really good because for a mini ITX case, it's, it's pretty big. And the, uh, speaking of airflow, it comes with two uh, Bitphoenix Spectre um, 120 mil fans, one for intake and one for as an exhaust. It, 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 they, I'm not going to swap them out for anything better because Bitphoenix make decent fans as well. So there's no point in me going out and, and getting more fans because I think about it I've got the tower cooler cooling the, the processor um, I've, I've got the blower cooler on on the GPU and the system should be relatively cool as it is so I just didn't really see the point in going out and buying more fans when the case comes with perfectly good ones so there we go that is my Hackintosh I'm really really pleased um, it's taken me quite a while to get all the parts together but I got them all for incredible prices, and um, it's turned out to be a really, really budget sort of system. Um, if you were to go out and buy all of these parts now from Amazon and places like that, you'd be looking at maybe a 500, 600 pound value. Um, I managed to get everything for under 350 quid, which I think is just absolutely awesome. So um, yeah, that is the system, that is the Hackintosh. Um, I hope you enjoyed this first part, guys, and I hope you're excited for the next three. Um, part two will be the build, which I am absolutely rearing to go with. Um, so yeah, as always guys, I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ra.